In this video, I'm going to break down every affiliation's team tactics cards and share with you which I think are the best ones and definitely the ones you should be taking along with you. Hey guys, Rich from Rich Big Gaming. I hope everyone is doing fantastically well. Welcome to this, another Marvel Crisis Protocol video. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about Team Tactics cards, but more specifically, those Team Tactics cards uh, that are uh, attached to a given affiliation. Now, Tactics cards are a very limited resource in this game. You only get to bring 10 with you as part of your roster, and when you're building your squad, you have to choose only five. And there are some cards that are restricted, so it kind of shows you how impactful these cards can be. Now, there are everything in this game when it comes to tactics cards. Some of them, uh, as I mentioned, are that impactful. They have been restricted so that you can only take a maximum of two of those restricted cards with you. Um, some of them are huge big moments in the game that allows your entire team to do something. And some of them are more at the other end and maybe a little bit more playful uh, and don't really have a huge amount of value in the game but are there as kind of an aesthetic thing and you probably don't see too many of those being played but without further ado let's jump in and take a look at each affiliation's tactics cards uh, and I'll give you my view on which I think is the best. Okay guys so starting out and we are doing these in alphabetical order as per affiliation so we will be starting out with the A-Force. Um, they only have three uh, Team Tactics cards available to them. They've got Special Delivery, which is going to allow another A-Force character with flight to be able to move She-Hulk up the board and then let She-Hulk make an attack, uh, which is quite nice. We've then got A-Force Assemble, which is going to be spend three power. And then when the allied character is defending against an attack, this round add one die to the defense role for each other Air Force character within two, so some extra defensive stuff. And then Stalwart Determination. Uh, this is going to be another reactive card. During the power phase, any number of allied Air Force characters may spend one power to play this card. Characters that spent power to play this card cannot be pushed or thrown by enemy effects this round. So, you know, overall, not a bad set of cards. You've got one that is very offensive with special delivery, and then a couple that are very much more on the defensive stroke counter control side. Um, and there's two of these that I really do like. I think Stalwart Determination is a really good card, uh, especially on the right setup, something like a Gamma or something like that, uh, stopping your opponents being able to displace you. Now, you can still be placed, uh, but I do think that's a very, very solid card and one that you will see quite a bit. But for me, there's only one winner here, and it is going to be Special Delivery. It's a really big uh, turn one play. Um, you want to, you know, you try and get somebody with a long move uh, being able to pick up She-Hulk, essentially move her up the board. So getting her into prime position for body guiding, for being able to make attacks, um, and she gets to be able to make an attack off the back end with it as well, uh, which is really nice. I was a huge fan of the card drop off uh, before that was taken out of the uh, out of the rotation. Um, and this kind of does the same thing, uh, but with less restrictions because uh, you don't need to worry too much about the size of the character. They don't need to be bigger than She-Hulk. So a lot of characters in A-Force that have flight and some definite... Um, Definite ones that are uh, prime uh, to be able to do this. So, uh, yeah, that is my pick for A-Force. Okay, then, going on to Asgard next. And an affiliation that doesn't have too many tactics cards, but you can imagine with those four new characters coming later this year, they will be adding to this roster. But we've got Rainbow Bridge, spend three, uh, and you can place yourself within three, but everyone on your team can do it. Doom Prophecy, which has had a bit of a strange life as a card. It used to be an unaffiliated card. Uh, then it was unaffiliated restricted. 
then it was restricted and Asgard only, and now it's not restricted and Asgard, but essentially you pay three power, and the character that pays the power, uh, they can't roll defense dice against physical attacks for the rest of the game. This doesn't disappear um, once they've been dazed or anything like that, uh, but they do add dice uh, to its physical attacks equal to its physical defense. So if you've got four physical defense, you get to add uh, four extra dice to your physical attacks. But that part only lasts until the next cleanup phase. Um, so this card can be really impactful, um, but you've really got to think about what characters you're putting it on. You've got to think about where during a turn and even during a game where you use it. I see this as being a bit of a, a last hurrah uh, to try and take some of your opponents out. Angela's the sort of prime one for this but even then um, you want to be really really careful when you uh, when you play it on her and then lastly we've got Odin's Blessing when an Asgard character would be damaged by an enemy effect they may spend three power reduce the amount of damage suffered to one works in exactly the same way as exceptional healing which we know is a really good card so probably no surprise here guys Odin's Blessing is going to take it for me um, just being able to mitigate damage coming in is absolutely huge, especially a big attack into a big character. Um, this may go up in value even more uh, once we get the even bigger six threat version of, of Thor. Um, so I do really like this card and I think it, it can really work well across most games. It's probably a card you're going to see uh, most Asgard players not only take in their roster, but also in their squad as well. On to the first of our OG affiliations. And it's really weird. One of the trends I've noticed is the larger, and this isn't always across the board, but the, the, the bigger affiliations don't always tend to have the same amount of cards available to them. So if we take a look for Avengers, um, only four. And really, there are not a lot of these that are really any good whatsoever um anger management um gives damage and power to hulk um which i gather is a is a cute little thing but you you never really want to to give damage right you never want to you never want to put damage of your own accord onto any of your characters for the most part um we've then got reserve members uh we've got second wind which um only specifically remove stun uh, which uh, yeah always found strange and they remove a damage as well um, and then we've got of course the winner here um, is going to be Avengers Assemble everybody spends a power they get to make a short advance um, can be really really clutch on opening moves it can also be really good to get characters that have been displaced back onto points for scoring um, it's a card you're going to see Quite often, I'm, I'm seeing it less and less because there's such a plethora of either character specific or even just you know completely neutral cards out there to use. But you will often see an Avengers player using Avengers Assemble. Um, all the movement that you get from like people like Sam Wilson, things like that, this can just help even more. Okay, then moving into Black order and six cards for these guys um let's talk about a couple of them first of all because we've got um one two three of these cards are going to be character specific so we've got black onslaught which is going to work with black swan and black dwarf so it means you have to take both of them um first of the black order the leadership card for corvus glaive which nobody's really taking and then Servants of Titan, which is Cosmic Ghost Rider's card, which again, Cosmic Ghost Rider, whilst on paper as a murder ball, or not quite as murderish as he was, um, looks like he'd be really good in Black Order. Um, just the cost of him is quite prohibitive. 
So then we've also got Mothership. Um, basically, this is going to be two characters, each spending two power each to play this card, so four power in total. And no matter where the characters are on the board, you can pick up one and put it in within range one of the other. So really good for getting characters around. Now, the character that moves can't be holding an objective. That makes sense. Um, but this is a pretty good card. Um, we've then got Price of Failure. Choose an injured allied character to play this card. Other allied characters gain three three power the chosen character is ko now this doesn't need to be a black order character that you use this on and there is some potential shenanigans with um the likes of uh, ultron with age of ultron with ghost rider i think as well uh, i can't remember if the ghost rider one works or not but um again unless you really know you're going to 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 sort of die then Three power is is not a huge benefit for having a character being taken off the board. And then lastly, we've got blood to spare. It's going to be reactive. When a black order character would be dazed by an enemy effect, it may spend three power to play this card. The character immediately performs an attack before gaining the dazed token. If this attack results in the character removing damage, it is not dazed. Um, so this is a reactive, basically. Your character gets beaten up um, and they get to slap them back interestingly the attack back doesn't need to be against the character that actually um that actually made the attack in the first place so quite interesting um look if i'm going to be playing black order i want to try and murder as many things as quickly as possible so for me blood to spare is the one that i would uh, i would definitely be taking okay brotherhood of mutants and for an affiliation, again, with so many characters, uh, they only have three, technically only three, um, affiliated tactics cards. You've got Difficult to Please. This is going to involve Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, and Magneto. Basically, Scarlet Witch needs to daze or KO someone. Quicksilver needs to have interacted or picked up an objective token. And then if they do that, Magneto can play this card. Um, you remove an activator token from Magneto. So it's essentially giving you an extra activation with Magneto, which can be good. But also it could mean that you lose priority, so it could be bad. Um, Books of Truth, this is going to allow you to reroll um, attack or defense dice, including failure results. There's probably better neutral cards out there. And then lastly, Asteroid M. Two Brotherhood of Mutants characters may both spend two power to play this card. Place one, blah, blah, blah. it works exactly the same way as the Black Order card just worked. Um, but I am going to be picking Asteroid M for this one. Especially when you think about characters like Magneto, who are quite slow. Uh, being able to get characters up and around the board. Especially when you've got some long movers like Sabretooth or... Um, well, Sabretooth or Mystique, and then you've also got characters like Juggernaut who can get up the board really, really quickly. Being able to get your other characters up the board who are a little slower, um, this is a really, really good way of being able to do that. Uh, however, I do want to give a shout out because whilst it isn't technically a Brotherhood of Mutants card, if you're playing Magneto, this is your best friend. Um, we spoke about how Tactics cards are a finite resource. Um, this card, Magnetic Refraction, Magneto pays two. All units within three gain cover um, until the during this, this entire round. Even if Magneto is dazed, it still stays up. Um, and it's not cover that can be taken away by moving to within range two, because that rule only applies to terrain cover. But the real kicker here is if your squad is using the Brotherhood of Mutants affiliation, well, if you play Magneto, you're going to be. Return this card to your available team tactics cards during the cleanup phase. This card may be played again this game. Um, so you get to use this card as many times as you want when you're playing Brotherhood of Mutants. Um, typically on Magneto, it goes up and it, for as much as possible, it stays up because um, it's so impactful. Everybody having cover just increases the survivability of everybody around him. Hyrex, one of the OG affiliations, and again, another affiliation that have only got four tactics cards, three of which are character-specific. Cosmic Invigoration is going to let uh, Red Skull spend power. 
choose another character uh, that has an activated token, remove the activated token from them, but they might take some damage off the back end. Dig In is going to be a Brock Rumlo, aka Crossbones card. Um, he gets to reroll dice uh, and he gets to stop himself being moved uh, by enemy or indeed allied effects. And then Black Bifrost, um, it comes with Malekith. It's going to be a little portal. People can interact and, and move through the portal. Um, but the one for me that sort of wins out is going to be Dark Rain. Um, anybody, any Cabal can spend three power. You choose an enemy character and then all Cabal characters can reroll any number of attack dice when they're attacking that chosen character this round. Especially if you're coming up against a big bad that you really want to take down. Maybe they're holding a couple of objective tokens. Maybe you're coming up against a Hulk who is just destroying everybody on the board. This is a really nice way of being able to not necessarily guarantee but being able to uh, make sure you've got a much better chance of being able to take that character down. Convocation next, and these guys bring a lot of tactics cards. Now, what I haven't put in here is their um, leadership tactics card, and the reason for that is the way that that's unique to other leadership tactics cards is whilst it does count as one of your 10, it actually doesn't count as one of your five, so it allows you to take that plus five other tactics cards. But we've got a huge number for them here. We've got the Bane of Dambala, we've got the Wand of Watum, Orb, Orb of Agamotto, easy for me to say, Book of Cagliostro, the Astral Ring, and the Plains of Poldark. But the one that wins out for me here is going to be the Ironbound Books of Shumagorath. A convocation character may spend two power during the power phase to play this card. This round, when an enemy targets an allied character with a physical attack, you may choose to change the attacks type to Mystic. Now, why is this important? Well, you find with most of the wizards, they have a very, very good um, um, Mystic defense and Mystic tech, and usually not so good physical defense and physical tech. So being able to change that attack type to Mystic means that you can use your mystical defensive stat line which is probably going to be higher plus any defensive tech that you have got when an allied character is ko'd after the effect is resolved you may return this card to your available team tactics cards this card may be played again this game we talked about how being able to recycle cards and use them time and time again increases their value and there are some really um, really nice shenanigans you can do here with grunts because this card doesn't state uh, that it can't be a non-grunt character uh, and again grunts are something you can recycle and keep bringing back and back so essentially you play this card you're almost well you're pretty much immune to physical attacks you get to turn them all into mystic um, um, and that works for everybody, by the way, not just the, the Convocation characters. It works for any uh, Splash characters you brought in there as well. And then you do something to murder your Grunts, and your Grunts come back uh, the next turn. And then this card is available for you to play next turn as well. So really, really nice card from a defensive standpoint. But also the fact that you can recycle it uh, increases its value quite a lot. Criminal Syndicate next. Uh, six tactics cards for these guys in total, and it's a whole mix of different things. And I've got to say that the vast majority of them are not very good. Um, cruelty can be okay as a last-ditch attempt to try and take somebody out. Um, Bounty Hunters just isn't very good. You know, cards like this for me that are targeting specific characters should really give VPs. Um, no mercy with an allied character would daze an enemy character. The allied character that played this card gains three power. Like a tactics card for three power is not very good. Um, cruel tutelage you may spend one power to play this card. The next attack this turn adds three dice to its attack roll. If the attack roll contains one or more failure results, the attacking character gains the stagger special condition at the end of its activation. So you're paying a power for three dice but also you're increasing your chance of rolling that failure, which means that for the next activation, you get one less 
uh, action, which is not very good. Um, Shadow Organization, I think, is pretty good. During the power phase, any number of allied criminal syndicate characters may spend two power to play this card. Enemy characters must be within two of characters that spent power to target them with effects this round. It makes people have to come up close and personal to you, which the criminal syndicate, that's you know generally where they want to be. Um, and yeah, I think it's a pretty good card, but there's only one card that I could choose here, all according to plan. During the power phase, any number of allied criminal syndicate characters may spend one power to play this card. Um, if you spend a total of 10 or more, why you would spend more, I don't know, um, take the priority token. It guarantees you having priority going into a round of a game, irrespective of whether your opponent had it or not. This cannot be underestimated how huge this is because it really messes with the whole catch-up and priority mechanics in this game. Um, typically, you know, the way that you lose priority is you daze or KO some of your opponents. Um, and typically what happens, especially at the at the um, daze stage, is if you daze a character um, or two characters for your opponent uh, and you lose priority because of it, not only are you losing priority, you've then got a couple of characters on your opponent's side coming back with lots of power to be able to do all of the things that they want to do. This card allows you to mitigate that. You can deal the damage to murder your opponent and take them out, and then you can double down on those characters that have come back, reducing the number of characters your opponent has on the board, uh, just making it that much more difficult for them to be able to uh, control those VPs. So very, very good card. One of the best, at least in my opinion, uh, one of the best tactics or, or team tactics that are affiliated card in the game. You're going to see it in almost every criminal syndicate list because it's just so, so impactful. Uh, oh, dearie me. Dark Dimension next. Dormammu all by himself. And because he is a character by himself, he's only bringing a couple of tactics cards with him. Dark Empowerment and Dark Restoration. One of them is going to allow a character to suffer a damage and then make an attack and give the power that that attack would have generated, so power equal to the damage dealt, to another character. The idea behind this is it's a way of being able to give power to Dormammu because he struggles with power generation. Um, the other one, Dark Restoration, Dormammu spends six and brings back a character who's been killed or been KO'd. Um, they've got to be threat value three or less. Um, they come back with on the healthy side no damage no special conditions etc etc um i don't think either of these cards are particularly good but if i had to toss a coin and pick one i'd say dark empowerment because you can give some power to dormammu but equally the other one could work as well um not a fan of dark dimension Okay, defenders next. And for a long time, guys, this was the extent of the defenders cards. Um, Mystic Portals, or Pentagrams of Faralar, as it's known, um, works in exactly the same way, or, or pretty much the same way as, as the other portals from Malekith. Um, and the way that this used to be really good was that you could have uh, Doctor Strange spend the power... Uh, you on, on turn one to be able to do this but they change the timing of it it now happens during the power phase um and nobody's taking nobody's taking the uh, the gem on on strange anymore so it has lost some of its some of its potency to say the least um but we did have revealed and i do apologize for the the quality of these uh two additional cards that I think are coming in the I want to say the Silver Sable and the Shang-Chi pack Shang-Chi 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 let me know down in the comment section below um, first is going to be Street Smarts during the power phase any number of allied defenders characters may each spend one power to play this card this round while a character that played this card is holding or contesting an objective if it would be pushed advanced or thrown it may suffer one damage if it does it is not pushed, advanced, or thrown. So a bit of counter-control measure, which is quite nice. Um, but the one that's going to take it for me is going to be Mystic Ward. An allied defender's character may spend two power to play this card. Choose an objective token within three of the characters that play this card. 
and place a Mystic Ward token on it. The marked objective token cannot be interacted with, contested, or controlled during this round. If a player is currently controlling the objective token, they are no longer controlling it and then remove it during the next power phase. Um, it doesn't score you VPs, but it stops your opponent scoring VPs, which is huge, absolutely huge. Um, you know, this could this could stop your opponent from scoring, um, you know, two two points, which is you know up to two up to two VPs. I think maybe three is the most. I can't remember what they've done with Gamma Wave now, but um, it's it's really really big. And for two power being able to do that, um, I think it's something you're going to see taken with a lot of defenders uh, because it's just going to stop your opponent from from scoring VPs. So. I really do like this card. It can work as a catch-up mechanic. It can work as a, I'm just going to get further ahead of you mechanic. Or it could be that clutch that it does indeed win you the game. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy next. Uh, and four tactics cards from these guys. Only one of them is going to be character specific. And that is Foreign Assignment. Whole bunch of stuff on this card. Um, it's all around Agent Venom and him being able to do a whole bunch of stuff. Um... I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, it can do a lot of work, but I, mean, I am not a huge fan of it. Uh, but then we've got three pretty solid cards as far as I'm concerned. We've got Crew of the Milano. Um, a Guardian's character spends one power. Everyone that spends one power removes all special conditions and, that, and can't suffer any more until the end of the round. Uh, uh, until the end of this round. Compare that to... The same card for Avengers, where it just removes stun, um, is pretty brutal. Galaxy's Greatest, they're going to get some big, dumb hero tokens. Um, up to four Guardians of the Galaxy Guardians of the Galaxy characters may spend two power each to play this card. They have to be injured, so they're on their injured side. Um, characters that spend power to play this card gain a big, dumb hero token. Characters with a big, dumb hero token add one die to their attacks and defensive rolls increasing the survivability of them um, and then my favorite card but i had to take a little bit of a breath on this one love all misfits any number of guardians of the galaxy characters may spend one power each to play this card each character that ro played this card rolls one die if they roll a crit or a wild they immediately make an attack or sorry make a zero cost attack or they gain two power if they roll a hit Enemy characters within three of this character holding or contesting an objective token suffer one damage. If they roll a block or a blank, they get to make a short advance. And then if they roll a fail, the character and all other characters within two gain the stun special condition. Uh, and you complete them in whatever you order you want. Um, look, to be honest, guys, all three of those non-foreign assignment cards could be really good. This is probably my favourite card, but it can either win you the game or it can lose you the game. I've had this card uh, allow me to uh, KO a, or days, but technically KO, um, a Hulk round one when it popped off and everybody got their extra attacks. I've also had every single member of my team roll the skull and give everybody stun. Um, so it's very much feast or famine with this. So for me, I really, really like Galaxy's Greatest. Um, Something that a lot of, of the top players will tell you is they want a tactics card to pay X and do Y. Um, Lovable Misfits is a little bit too manic for a lot of players, uh, which is why you don't see it, see it played a huge amount. I personally believe that if you're a Guardians, you're not a true Guardians player unless you take this card every game and play it. But Galaxy's Greatest is very, very good. But equally, guys, Crew of the Milano... Like those those two cards, Galaxy's Greatest and Crew of the Milano are really, really good. Maybe actually I've got it wrong. Maybe Crew of the Milano is the better of these two cards, but either way, um two very, very good and one essential taking as, as far as I'm concerned card uh, for Guardians of the Galaxy. Hellfire Club up next. They have a leadership card. It is their only tactics card. Therefore, it is the best. And it's actually really good. Really, really good indeed. I mean, first of all, you need to play this card to play Hellfire Club. So it's kind of a given that you're going to be playing it. Um, but look, we all know the problem with Hellfire Club at the moment. This card and the characters you can bring with it 
is the problem. Um, but we'll maybe leave that for another video. But as it is the only card, it is there by default, the best and indeed the worst. Hydra decks and quite a few cards to pick here from. Um, lots of texty things on here that when you read them, think feel like they and they can do some amazing things um but a lot of them require you to do a lot to be able to achieve them <clears throat> endless legions is going to it's a red red skull master of hydra one it means that your uh hydra troopers can't be ko'd this turn they're just pushed instead i don't know anybody who's taking that one um, occult research during the power phase red skull master of hydra may spend 10 power to play this card red skull master of hydra and all characters within two of him gain a stagger token red skull master of hydra gains the following superpower for the rest of the turn this character may perform an additional action each activation the problem with this card is the 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 risk reward and the opportunity cost is huge. If this is something you could do turn one, turn two maybe, it's going to be worthwhile. Realistically, you're only doing it turn three at the earliest, maybe turn four, um, which means that you're only going to get two, maybe three activations with him. One of which you're losing because of stagger. Potentially other characters as well. Um, it costs 10 power, which is huge, absolutely huge. Um, and you're going to get an extra two, maybe three actions. For me, it's just really not worth it. Um, High Council, another card that you look at and think this sounds really good. Um, if the following conditions are met simultaneously, an allied Hydra character may play this card. Johann Schmidt, so one of the Red Skulls, is not dazed and has six or more power. Arnim Zola is contesting a secure objective token. Uh, Wolfgang von Strucker is not dazed and is within range two of two or more enemy characters with the poison special condition. And then Helmet Zemo has dazed or KO'd an enemy character this round. If you do all of that, then you get to bring a up to a four or less threat value character from your roster and place it within two of the characters that played the card and it's now part of your squad. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, bringing on a another character into the game is huge. Having four threat more than your opponent, if you think about it, if you're playing at 15, sorry, if, you're, if your opponent's playing at 15 and you're playing at 19, that is a huge advantage. But there's two problems with this. Um, first of all, it's very, very, very telegraphed right if you have this card your opponent knows what it does it's very easy for them to stop any of these things from happening right especially the the poison with um baron uh, uh baron zima baron zima uh, von strucker anyway uh wolfgang von strucker um so whilst the results of the card are very very good the ability to actually achieve it is so difficult that i just don't think it's it's worthwhile doing. Um, two Martial Rise, uh, when an allied Hydra character with an active leadership ability is KO'd, another leader character may play this card. Choose two allied characters with Hydra or Cabal leadership abilities. Both chosen characters' leadership abilities become active. Again, really good. Potentially really good. Having two active abilities um, can, can, can be can be amazing um but it relies <coughs> she's me it relies on your character being taken out right um which your opponent could just choose to never do um one that i do really like is scientific method it's an arnim zola specific card um it basically you you put this on something like x23 it gives them this esp leakage attack um, but it also means that when an enemy character targets this character with an attack, this character adds two dice to its defense roll unless the attacking character pays two power. Nice thing about this is Zola spends the power, the chosen character takes the damage, but if you have it on a character that has healing factor, it becomes really nice. Now, it does have to be three threat or, uh, three threat or less, 
um, which is why X23 is like a prime candidate for it. I know Quinn's played that a lot, so I do like that card, but the one I'm going to pick out is going to be Inevitable Betrayal. During the cleanup phase, before victory points are scored, an allied Hydra character may spend 8 power to play this card. Choose an, choose an enemy character within range 2 that is contesting a secure objective token. The chosen character counts as one of your characters for contesting secure objective tokens this round. Um, again, it's one of those things that your opponent can't stop, um, and it could be a big swing. It could be a two point swing it could be up to a four point swing um which is <clears throat> which is absolutely huge um so you know again i spend the power and it does the thing um this is going to come up more often than not in 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 many many games um now i will say that this obviously you know isn't going to work on pay to flips so you know don't use this on your pay to flips because it's going to do nothing because you only do it during the cleanup phase <clears throat> um so that's right at the very very end so it needs to be just a traditional secure that you don't have to pay to flip but i really really like this and in the right situation uh, i think can work really well um inhumans next and again only three cards um we've got inhuman royal family attila rising and terra genesis Attila Ryzen uh, is going to be an injured inhuman character, can play it. And then all inhuman characters gain one power for each allied injured inhuman character. It's fine, um, but there's probably better, you know, non non inhuman cards that are better for you. Inhuman Royal Family, any number of allied inhuman characters may spend two power each to play this card. Once this round, each character that spent power to play this card may re-roll any number of dice in one of their attack or defense rules. This I really, really like because um, you can choose when you want to use it. So you could do it at the very, very beginning um, of, of, of your uh, turn, of your activation. <clears throat> because it lasts for the whole round, um, you can choose when you want to do it. So, you know, is Medusa going to be taken out by an attack um, so you can re-roll your dice and, and keep her alive? Yes, great, use it then. Um, is Medusa trying to fish for that, um, trying to fish for that, uh, you know, crit and wild or whatever it is she needs for a flurry on her attack and things? Great, use it there as well. So I do really, really like this card. And th this one for me is probably the better across the board, but... The card that I'm going to pick out is Terra Genesis. Now, it is specific to extracts that have civilian tokens on them. Uh, so it isn't going to work with the likes of hammers or something like that. Right, it needs to be civilian tokens. <clears throat> and that's quite, quite clearly depicted on the, on the cards themselves. Um, but choose an enemy character holding a civilian token within range 3 of this character and roll 4 dice. Deal one damage to the enemy character for each hit, crit, and wild world. If the enemy character is dazed or KO'd by this damage, you score two VPs. Two VPs is huge. So whilst this isn't a pay X and do Y, um, the risk-reward in this card, for me, is more than worth it. You know, you choose a character who is, you've just whiffed on, right? You've got them down to one health, you play this, uh, and because it doesn't need to be during a character's activation either, it doesn't even matter if it's you know an Inhuman's character's activation. They can play this at any point during your turn. Um, you you know you you roll this, you you play this card, and you just pray to the dice gods. <clears throat> More often than not, I think it's like a twenty five percent chance of of getting one. So you're probably going to be getting it, um, at least that one damage that goes through. And then it does two things, guys. The, the, the swing here isn't just the instant two VPs. It's also then the fact that whatever they're holding, they're going to drop. So you can then pick up. So it's actually a three VP swing. Um, two of those VPs are not even on the board for your opponent to be able to contest. I've seen this win games mid-activation before. So really, really good card indeed. Uh, but again, probably one you want in your roster. You're not going to be play it. You're not going to be able to play it every game purely because it has to be civilians. Okay, next up is Midnight Suns. And again, an affiliation I think we're going to see 
uh, more cards come for. We know that Elsa Bloodstone is coming. We know that Man Thing is coming. Um, we know, I'm sure there's a couple of others that will be part of Midnight Suns as well. Um, and for me, they've got a, a couple of pretty good cards. Um, oh, well, actually, one, one good card, one very good card. Banishment, I'm not a huge fan of. Um, really not a fan of that. The, again, the cost for what you get um, isn't isn't great. Bats the Ghost Hound is going to let you modify dice. So when an ally amendment son's character is modifying its attack or defense dice, it may spend two power to play this card. Change one of the allied character's attack or defense dice to any result. And you can change failures. So if you are looking for that trigger... Um, you can you can absolutely get it. Uh, Midnight Suns only, but it can come in clutch. But, I mean, look, guys, we all know which one this is, right? Spending two power to get to be able to do a free attack on Hulk, or I-Hulk even, plus the rest of your team, is very, very good in T indeed. Board-wide um, Midnight Suns activation there, so you're in the middle of your activation, or beginning of it, or wherever you are in there. Um, they all spend two power, they play this card, um, <clears throat> and then they all get to make an attack. Uh, a zero-cost attack still, but it's really good. Most of them are going to get, you know, on average, one or two damage through. Um, Hulk's probably going to get more. Some of the other ones might get more as well. Um, but um, they're going to get, you know, they're probably going to get the power back from it. Uh, but just being able to focus down a character, things like that, is is so, so good. This is such a good card. There's a couple of these in the game at the moment. Um, and they are very, very impactful indeed. Um, Sentinels next. And for affiliation with only three characters, uh, they actually have more tactics cards than they do characters. Even one more if you include the non-Sentinel card, but is technically a Sentinel card that allows you somebody else to become a Sentinel. I don't like that card. I've um, got Directive 1, uh, which is during the power phase, all Sentinels... Uh, all Sorry... <clears throat> We've got Directive 1, which is during the power phase. Allied Sentinels characters may spend 1 power. If at least 2 power was, was spent, you may play this card. Until the end of the round, enemy characters do not benefit from stealth um, and cannot re-roll or modify defense dice. Additionally, you do not require line of sight to target characters. So that's, that's quite nice, to say the least. Um, online and operational Sentinel Prime Mark IV may spend 8 power to play this card. Choose an injured Sentinel Mark IV within 3. The chosen character removes all of its damage, all special conditions, drops all objective tokens, and flips its card to the healthy side. So bringing them back, basically, which is okay. Uh, scrap Metal with an allied character with a Sentinel programming superpower will be KO'd. It may spend 2 power to play this card. Roll 5 dice for each uh, crit hit wild result. All other characters within range 2 of the character that played this card suffer 1 damage. Additionally, all other characters within 2 of the character that played this card gain the stun special condition. The character that's played this card is then KO'd. It essentially blows them up. Um, not a fan of this, really. Um, really not a fan of this. Um, you know, 5 dice, you'd expect to get 1 or 2 off. Um, in a pinch, you can get you out of a bad situation, but not not worth it for me but the one that is very very good and when i have played sentinels has kind of been the linchpin is going to be efficient machines reactive during the power phase an ally cassandra nova may spend three power to play this card until the end of this round allied sentinel characters that includes cassandra nova because she is sentinels as well uh within three of cassandra nova treat block results as wild results and if you look at the number of triggers that sentinels have you will see how impactful that is um it's really the only thing that sentinels have got going for the moment is this card because everything else is pretty shoddy that they've got in their affiliation okay guys on to the guys with all the tactics cards it is shield um lots and lots 10 affiliated tactics cards to choose from here guys um <clears throat> look some of them for me i i just personally don't like um you know shield mobile is, is okay new age it means you've got to play jim hammond who's the original human torch um life model decoy 
can be okay. Helicarrier strikes, you know, sort of a big attack with an explosion at the bottom of it. Um, but there's a couple in here that that, that are pretty good. Um, hard reset can can be good in a pinch, uh, but the one for me that I have picked out is going to be Battlefield Medicine. Um, you are almost always going to find yourself with an opportunity to use this card, um, and two power for removing three damage and a special condition from either themselves or a character without a daze token within three um, is huge, absolutely huge. Healing in this game is at a premium. You know, they removed med pack, which is the card that is named on this tactics card as well. Um, but being able to, you know, this is just patch up, but significantly better. I mean, it has to be during a character's activation, so you lose a little bit there, but I mean, why not? Why not both, right? Um, but I also want to give a shout out, guys, to this is specifically going to be when you're playing Nick Fury. Uh, so this isn't uh, an affiliated shield card, but you guys probably know what it is. It's going to be Eye in the Sky. Unaffiliated reactive with an allied character is targeted by an attack. Nick Fury may spend three power to play this card. The targeted character makes a short advance. If at the end of the advance, the character is outside of the attacks, um, range or the attacker's line of sight, the attack ends. If it is the attacker's activation and the target did not, and the attack did not target multiple characters, the attacker may make another action. If your squad is using the shield affiliation, return this card to your available team tactics cards during the cleanup phase. This card may be played again. So what does it do? Um, basically, it lets you stop being attacked, uh, which is which is really good, really, really good. Um, also, guys, it's recyclable. You can use it time and time and time again. Um, that's one of the reasons why this card is very, very good, because it can have an impact each and every round. Round one, maybe not, because you often don't have the power, but from round one onwards, you're often keeping three power on Nick um, just to be able to... Uh, just to be able to... Um, play this card right and, and and keep it there in a pinch so really really good card uh, and whilst it's technically not affiliated a little bit like magneto's one um if you're playing nick fury whether he's your leader or not um you probably want to be uh, to be taking this card with you only works with nick <coughs> um nick fury not the howling commandos nick i believe so uh, yeah just to note on that one spider foes next and they've got a whole bunch of new cards uh because obviously we've got a a whole bunch of uh, new um, new members of uh, of Spider Foes. So first up, we've got founding members. During the power phase, an allied Spider Foes character may play this card. During this round, each time an enemy character suffers damage from an allied effect, choose up to one of the listed allied characters that is within range two of the enemy character. So that's the one that you know did the did the stuff. Um, the enemy character gains the special condition shown below corresponding to the chosen character. So Sandman gives slow, Vulture gives bleed, Mysterio gives hex, uh, Otto Octavius gives stun, Electro gives shock, and Craven gives poison. Um, I don't mind this. I really don't mind it. The fact that it's a zero cost card is is quite nice. I would argue there are probably some, some other better cards out there, but I, I think this is perfectly fine. So next up, we have got custom upgrades. At the start of the activation phase, an eyed spider Force character may spend two power to play this card. Choose an enemy character. The character that plays this card gains the singular focus superpower. And then the character that played this card loses the singular focus superpower when the chosen character is KO'd. So what does singular focus do? This character adds two dice to its attack rolls when targeting the chosen character. When this character rolls defense dice, if the chosen character is attacking, it adds two dice to its defense roll. When this character rolls defense dice, if the chosen character is not attacking, it removes two dice from its defense roll. Um, so it's, you know, it's a boost against one character. Um, yeah, it's fine. Like, it's just fine. Um, strategic retreat with an allied spider foes character is targeted by an attack. If it is holding one or more objective tokens, it may spend four power to play this card. Choose another allied character within range three of the chosen character that played this card. 
Move one objective token from the character that played this card to the chosen character. That character is now holding the objective token. This card does not allow characters to hold more objective tokens than they uh, than it states. Then the chosen character that played this card advances away from the attacking character. I really, really like this. Um, it's a bit of a, you know, a little bit eyes in the prizey in terms of, you know, it triggers when you're being attacked. Um, it potentially lets you move away from the attack. And what, what this does as well is it doesn't say that your opponent gets the attack back, um, which is which is quite interesting. Um, or does it stop it? I don't think it would stop it because it doesn't say... No, so it wouldn't stop the attack irrespective of, of where you moved because uh, you've already been targeted. But still really, really good. Uh, I do quite like this one. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then Surprise Webhead. spider foes. Any number of spider foes characters may spend two power each to play this card. Choose an enemy character. Each character that spent power may immediately perform an attack with a cost of zero against the chosen character. I thought this was in the vein of the Midnight Suns card that we had, and I was like, oh, this is the one. And then I reread it. You only get to attack a single enemy, so you're focusing in on one target, which could be really good, could be really good, but because it's less board-wide like, you know, like like the other stuff, um, I, I'm i less, less of a fan of this one. Um, the one that I have picked out, however, is one of the older cards, and it's going to be Sinister Traps. Um, I just really, really like this card. Any allied character may play this during the first power phase. Choose an objective token. The first time a character ends a movement within range two of that objective token, roll five dice. The moving character suffers one damage for each hit, crit, and wild result. If the character suffered damage, it is pushed short. The character opponent resolves the push. Um... I really like this card. It, it it enforces a huge amount of board control. You know, typically you're going to put this on one of your opponent's points. Um, and I really like um, like the style of play with this. Again, spider foes are an affiliation that I'm really looking at getting into. Um, and this is one of the reasons why for this card, because I do like these sort of shenanigans. Um, so I do really, really like this. Um, <clears throat> the fact that it's five dice increases your chances significantly of getting the damage, um, which means that you can push them away, meaning that they may not be able to, you know, pick up or interact with, with that objective. And then the idea being is that you then mooch up and, and go and take it for yourself. So, um, yeah, I do really, really like this card. And then we have got our X-Men. Um, again, big bolster to their cards. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. Um, I'm just going give to give you my high-level thoughts. First class, absolutely amazing. Um, to me, my X-Men, solid, right? Not amazing, but absolutely solid. Headmistress, uh, I'm okay with it. Um, Cerebro, still not. Still not being a huge, you know, still not a huge fan of that one. Um, Children of the Atom is is okay. Um, they get to remove a special condition, uh, but you know the problem we have with with X Men is there's a lot of cards they want to be able to take. Um, Mind wipe, again, not a huge fan of it. Um, but for me, guys, there is only one card on this list. If you'd have asked me six months ago. First class without a shadow of a doubt. It was it was the pivotal card around how X-Men were played. <clears throat> but then we got a little card called Xavier's Dream. When an allied character would suffer damage, any number of other characters may each spend one power to play this card. For each power spent to play this card, reduce the amount of damage that allied character would suffer by one. Um, there's no minimum on this, and there's no range requirements on this. Um, this just keeps characters alive for much, much longer. Um, in a pinch, like so good, so good for stopping a character. You know, they spent all their power on a, on a big spender or something like that, and you just mitigate all of the damage that they would do into them. So, uh, yeah, I would go on, go as far as saying I think this card is a little egregious, especially when you're combining it with things like exceptional healing on <clears throat> on Wolverine or even X23, somebody like that. Um, so yeah, this is, you know, and brace for impact and things like that. So you can layer this 
defensive tech now into the X-Men, making them very, very difficult to take down. So, um, yeah, I, I think this is a really good card. I think it's a little egregious, but I still think it's really, really good indeed. Wakanda next, and again, another affiliation that have had a huge number of additional cards over the last few months. Um, we're not going to go through all of them, but the one I the, the, the one I want to go through before we get on to the... Um, and to what I think is the best, and I, you know, it is the best, there's no arguing in that, it may be the single best tactics card in this game, uh, it's going to be Wakanda forever. Any number of allied Wakanda characters may spend one power to play this card. Each character that spent power may immediately perform an attack uh, with a cost of zero. So with these guys, they only have to spend one power, not the two that Midnight Suns do. And, again, it can be against any other character. And... You know, this used to be okay. It would still be taken. You know, you've got you had characters like Killmonger who in a pinch could do a you know a huge amount of damage. You get an extra shove from um from Shuri, things like that. But now we've got characters like Umbaku and King T'Challa. We've got the new T'Challa coming out, we've got new version of Killmonger. Those zero cost attacks could be absolutely huge. Absolutely huge. Um so yeah, it's it's very very interesting um and i think um again if you'd have asked me a few months ago this would have been the winner but the winner guys there's only one option for it right it's spirit of wakanda this is the most egregious tactics card in the game and right now i would argue it is the most overpowered tactics card in the entire game the advantage you get from this turn one being able to give all of your characters or the vast majority of your characters two power is huge and i know people have spoke about oh well you know they need to be bunched up so deployment isn't optimal it really doesn't matter guys um if you don't know what i'm talking about uh, i will leave a it will be on this side of the screen um there'll be a link to a video uh, that talks about it um in, in in a lot more detail and how it works with advanced r d or wong or something like that um it is just too good it is just too good in my opinion uh, and something needs to be done about this card um but right now guys it is still definitely the best card in the game uh for wakanda and i would argue um in the game itself okay next up we have got weapon x um only three tactics cards for these guys one of them is going to be the leadership card the other one is going to be a, a dossier thing. And we've seen versions of this where you get to add dice for attacks and things like that. I'm not a huge fan of it because your, your opponent can control a lot of what happens there. Um, the one I'm going to pick out, guys, is Call the Pack. To be fair, their leadership cards are pretty poor. But I think this could be okay, coupled with um, something like uh, No Matter the Cost, where you take damage rather than spending power. Um, means that you're guaranteed that you're going to heal the damage at the end of it if you've got a healing factor character. You just need to get the extra power onto them, which can be done quite easily. Um, <clears throat> and basically, when they play this card, uh, they play. They spend two power when they, when they would uh, remove damage. So at the end of the turn, they can play this card when they remove the damage. Um, that, char that character gets to advance, short, and then all allied characters within three get to advance towards the character that played this card. Um, is it the best card in the world? No, it's probably the best card that Weapon X have got going for them at the moment. Um, so there we go, it is what it is. Web Warriors next. Um, five cards for these guys, a couple of them are newer. Uh, so we got Clone Saga, an allied Web Warriors character may spend two power to play this card, choose an enemy character with the same name or alter ego as the character that played this card. The character that played this card gains the superpower shown below. Uh, imposter Syndrome. When attacking the chosen character, the character that played this card can modify or re-roll failure results and may re-roll any number of dice. It relies on so much stuff to do that. Um, but yeah, it's a flavour card, I would argue. Um, Masked Menace. During the power phase, up to three allied web warrior characters may spend one power to play this card. For each character... That played this card, place a camera token onto the battlefield, not within three of another camera. While while within three of a camera token, other characters gain an additional power when they deal damage to an enemy character with an attack or superpower. Remove all camera tokens from the battlefield during the next cleanup phase. I think this card's okay. Um, 
again, there are better cards available, both in affiliation, neutral, and character-based. Um, so I don't think this card is going to get a huge amount of play. Um, because, yeah, uh, the, the one power to then gain one extra power, you know, let's say that you might end up gaining two or three power if you are very, very lucky extra. Um, I just don't think it, it's actually it's actually worth it. Um, <clears throat> we've then got Ant May's Wheat Cakes. Any number of allied Web Warrior characters um, may spend a power. Characters that spend power remove the slow special condition and remove one. Um, it's about as good as the stun. Um, great in a in a mirror match. Um, really good in a mirror match. And we'll get onto that now because all webbed up. A Web Warriors character may spend three power to play this card. Each enemy character within range three of the characters that play this card suffers the slow special condition. When an allied Web Warriors character is attacking a character with the slow special condition, they add two dice to the attack roll. So <clears throat> really increases their, their damage output. But uh, the one for me is going to be Spider Tracker. After an enemy character ends a move action within four of an allied Web Warriors character... That allied character may spend two powers to play this card. Uh, this character may advance short. Um, it just gets them out of trouble. Um, it works super, super well on something like a charge. Where they have charged into you. They've used the action for that. And they're going to get the attack at the back end of it. <clears throat> and if you move out of range, because they haven't already targeted you with the attack. And because this happens when they end their movement... Um, it means that they can't do the attack, so they've wasted it. Uh, and they don't get it back either, because there's nothing that says they do. Um, which is really nice. Um, really nice indeed. So, yeah. This is the this is the choice for me. I think it also really plays into the whole Web Warriors. I'm not going to roll many dice. I'm going to run, pick up objectives, and then just stop my entire team from being attacked and just... You know, just stop, play, control everything and kind of run away with objectives, which I absolutely hate. But that is the way that most, I'm not going to say all, but most Web Warriors <clears throat> do play at the moment. Um, next up, my Winter Guard. Uh, I do love me some Winter Guard. We've got two cards here, Sovereign Strike, Winter Rush. One of them is terrible. One of them is amazing. Um, Winter Rush is not very good. I'd go as far as say it was terrible. Uh, but Sovereign Strike catches my opponents out so many times. Spend up to three power. Choose an interactive terrain feature uh, within four that is size four or less. All characters within one suffer two damage. Um, in a pinch, this can, you know, this can take out a number of characters simultaneously. Um, it doesn't have to be played during that character's activation, which means that it can catch your opponent off guard. Um, and, you know, you've got a few pushes and things like that and throws uh, that can get opponents into the optimal position for blowing it up. But just remember, it does injure your own characters as well. So just remember on that one. And then rounding it out, last as always, is going to be x-force and we've got a couple of of four cards here um <clears throat> oh dear the, the little things on these cards could make them so much better dirty work um dirty work should should give two vps if it gave two vps it would be absolutely amazing um pretty sneaky this is okay um you spend the power during the power phase. Each character can spend up to two power. Um, and then your opponent has to be within range two to attack them this round, which can be really nice. Also plays in really well with their leadership. It also plays in really well with um, people like Cable who want to be in range anyway. Most of their characters are, are melee characters, so you know they want to be up close and personal, so it helps with that. Preserve the dream when an enemy character targets an allied character with an attack if it has a higher threat value than the allied character. Any number of allied characters may spend one power to play this card. Characters that spent power to play this card immediately advance short toward the attacking enemy character. This could be really nice, but again, it's something that your opponent has to do. Um, so for me, the one that I'm picking, guys, is going to be Cat and Mouse. After all characters have been deployed, an X-Force character may play this card. Place this character within range 2 
of its current position, but you can make more than a more than one move uh, during its next activation, um, <clears throat> which is fine. Um, you know, that's absolutely fine. Typically, your target for this is going to be Cable. It means that you get Cable up the board. He then has his body slide by two, so he still gets to actually make two moves, another place and a move if he needs to, or a place and then a double tap or something like that. So, yeah, there we go, guys. That is going to be my breakdown of all of the affiliated Team Tactics cards in this game and giving you my opinion on which ones are best and the ones that you should be avoiding. But as always, guys, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Are there some cards that I've missed, some potential of them? I'm always, always willing to learn, guys. So if there's something there that I've missed and you go, actually, Rich, if you play this card, this, this, and this way, it can work out really good. Always intrigued to... Um, to hear about those things. Remember guys, it is always opinion based. Somebody's best is going to be somebody's worst. My play style will be different to your play style, but hopefully you found this video entertaining. We also went over some of the new tactics cards as well. Um, I wanna give a big shout out to all of our Patreons. Um, they really, really do help with the support of the channel. And if you do want to support the channel, you can do so from as little as a pound a month. There'll be a link down in the description below. Or you can also click the join button and become a YouTube member as well. But you don't need to do either of those to support the channel. Just simply liking, commenting, subscribing, uh, and sharing the content really, really does help. And it goes a long way to support the channel. Uh, guys, I want to give a big shout out to Leodis Games as well. Uh, the sponsor of the channel, they just make the running of it so much easier we run events there um, we've got a weekly league that we have with mcp and with shatter point as well i've just been to an old world ton we've got a more campaign going on there at the moment so if you are looking for uh, a local gaming store to both play at but also purchase your hobbying goods and needs um, then check them out there'll be a link down in the description below and you will get five pound off your first order also check out the Discord, guys. Um, nearly a thousand people on there now, so go check it out. It's where we announce most of our things. And as always, it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well, keep safe, and until next time, bye for now.